class of 2020, I know this is not how you imagined your graduation. Over the course of all these years, the grueling days and nights when you pushed yourself both physically and mentally beyond where you ever thought possible, you may have once or twice thought about this moment. You probably imagined walking across a stage in your regalia, your families and friends cheering you on, a moment full of pomp and circumstance, a recognition and a celebration of the most inconceivable hard work you put in at one of the world's leading medical schools. I'm quite certain you did not expect to be sitting in your homes, apart from your classmates, hearing me speak to you through a screen. If we had gathered as planned downtown in person, I would have talked about your unbelievable accomplishments. The leadership you have shown in spearheading the kinds of initiatives that have changed the landscape of our school, like your medical Spanish program, several of your wellness promoting programs, and 500 women in medicine. I would surely have mentioned your outstanding academic performance and the incredible success you had in matching to our country's top medical and surgical residency programs. Your dedication to serving your community was particularly evident in the last few weeks as you led or contributed to the school's COVID-19 volunteer efforts. I would have also offered an inspirational message, perhaps talking about how the role of physicians and physician scientists asks that we draw from a deep inner well in order to serve others, often at our own expense, and even in situations when that seems impossible. I would have talked about how it demands that we use careful analysis and logic, even when there are no right answers, no good answers, no established protocols or algorithms that we look for solutions grounded in data and science in spite of those who would dismiss the careful study and rigorous standards upon which our profession is built. Speaking to you now from the ether, rather than in person as I would have liked, it is clear that all of these qualities, all of what you are and what we hope you will continue to become have taken the spotlight. In a time when challenges to science and dismissal of facts have been woefully widespread, we now face a problem, a formidable virus that demands solutions grounded in data and scientific imagination, and there is urgency. We now have a problem that attracts the attention of the entire world to those values that we have emphasized during your education and training here. The selflessness and sacrifice of the physician. Our commitment to the sickest and most vulnerable and the vital importance of basic biomedical research. As you know, a special reference for the scientific basis of medicine has been a trademark of Washington University for many decades. Now, in our new reality, all eyes are on physicians and physician scientists looking to us to provide solutions from the diagnostic tests critical for public health to therapeutic drugs and new vaccines. In many ways, it is the ultimate validation of what this medical school has always stood for. As I have thought about the professional journey upon which you are about to embark, in the midst of the historic coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 crisis, a passage from Albert Camus' novel, The Plague, strikes me as so fitting. This famous novel follows a physician as he experiences an outbreak of the bubonic plague ravaging his city. I know it is a subject now very close to home. 
this doctor who is called on to provide medical care to those who have been stricken, to console families in their lowest moments, and also to help guide the community in containing the outbreak and preventing chaos, is described with the following phrase, quote, it was as if he was fighting against creation as he found it, quote, why do I think that description is something any physician can relate to? Why does that phrase resonate so deeply for me? It's because our role is to confront the human condition as it is given to us, and then to use our intelligence, science, and judgment to cajole it into sparing those who would be taken from us and to limit the harm it might do to others. Right now, fighting against creation means using all of our expertise and all of our resources to contain a virus that has disrupted life as we know it and brought the world to its knees. But we know this is not just in times of plagues. As physicians, we are always, in some ways, fighting against creation on our hospital wards, in our clinics, and in our labs. I want to say that again. As physicians, we are always, in some ways, fighting against creation. We know that your clinical education has helped you to understand this deeply. We have watched how you have grown into the physician's you are now. Time and again, you have looked at your world and figured out how to make it better, safer, more equitable. All of the qualities that we hope to cultivate in the next generation of doctors and scientists, you have them in spades. Today, as we officially welcome you into our ranks, we must acknowledge that we are sending you into a world full of unknowns. You are heading out into a more uncertain medical landscape than any previous class has encountered. This too, you are ready for. I know you have experienced multiple cycles of grief over the last few weeks as it became clear that we would not be able to recognize you in the grand and public way we should and that you so richly deserve, but you have been flexible and resilient and gracious. I know I speak on behalf of our entire faculty when I say that you have made us all proud and offered us renewed hope in the future of medicine at a time when we are so clearly in need of it. This graduation is not what any of us imagined or wanted for you. And while it will be true that you graduated medical school during a time of great crisis, it will also always be true that you became doctors at a time when the value of physicians to society could not possibly be more profound. The eyes of the world are on our hospitals and on our labs, and they will soon be on you as well. How fortunate we are that you are the future of medicine and medical science. There are challenges ahead, but you are ready for them. Congratulations, Washington University Class of 2020. From our school, from me, and from my 93-year-old mother who is fighting COVID-19 and holding her own, we cannot wait to see how you change the world and make it a better place. Greetings to the class of 2020 and to your families and loved ones, and congratulations on this significant milestone. To the class of 2020, please know that this virtual event is not meant to replace your graduation. I can promise you that we are working on plans for a proper in-person celebration sometime in the future. But for now, 
let me offer some thoughts. First, a big shout out and thanks to those parents and guardians who have supported our students. You should feel immensely proud of all your child has accomplished, and we are extremely grateful for your partnership in their success. Second, a significant thanks goes to our faculty and staff across the university, those who helped move us quickly to remote instruction, those who helped pack belongings, those who sent notes with support, encouragement, and resources to our students, those who have been here all along to cultivate their success from the time they set foot on campus until now. We owe you a debt of gratitude, and I'm reminded, especially in moments like these, that it is people like you who make this place so special and distinctive. Thank you. And now to the class of 2020. I want to start with a story. This is a story about a woman named Alice Imasu. Alice is originally from a small village in Uganda known for its lack of resources and basic human rights, including access to proper health care, prevention, and education. But that didn't stop Alice from pursuing her dream to enact change. Her passion for women's rights and public health began at the young age of 18 when she discovered that several of her friends had died from obstetric fistula. While this particular condition was devastating her home village of Balulu and others around it, instead of letting these challenges overcome her, she used it as fuel to launch interventions. In 1999, Alice founded the Association for the Rehabilitation and Reorientation of Women for Development in order to promote awareness and treat the condition, yet she continued to come up against obstacles in her home country. As a result, Alice chose to pursue her master's degree here at Washington University's Brown School. Armed with a degree, philanthropic contributions, and an ambitious dream, last year, Alice spearheaded the construction of the Specialized Women's Hospital in Soroti, Eastern Region, Uganda, one of the first of its kind in the country. This is a profound story about overcoming adversity, and not just overcoming adversity, but using that adversity to fuel passion, drive, and overwhelming success. Many of you have already faced adversity in your life. Some of you are, as of today, the first in your family to graduate from college. Some of you come from households near or below the poverty line. Some of you struggle with disabilities or mental health concerns. Some of you have faced injury or physical ailment. Some of you have overcome the loss of a parent or loved one. This semester, you faced yet another collective obstacle, a spring semester that abruptly moved online, immense feelings of displacement, and the loss of a physical community of people who have helped you thrive and flourish up until this point. This one collective obstacle has also led to other individual obstacles. Some of you have lost your jobs, or your parents have lost their jobs. Some of you needed to find a place to live, some of you were worried about your own health as well as the health and safety of your loved ones. Some of you have had summer and fall plans put on hold, and all of you have experienced some kind of loss in physical isolation. Indeed, we are all grieving in some form or another. These anxieties and disappointments are real and they are valid. In addition, they are obstacles you have worked hard and quickly to overcome, some that you are still overcoming as we speak. Every year during commencement, the chancellor gives a charge to the class. In keeping with that tradition, my charge to you today is that you find ways to live in the present moment, to not let uncertainty overcome your thoughts, and to find ways to use these moments of adversity to learn and grow, to find new ways of coping, new ways of doing, and new ways of relating to one another and the world around you, to become more empathetic and compassionate to fuel your passions and turn dreams into realities. I hope that you can look back on this spring semester and be proud of the ways you channeled adversity for the betterment of yourself and the betterment of humanity. Alice's story of adversity has already been written in stone. While there are many similar stories written about others who have come before, you better believe that this historic moment is also being written in stone. And when we write your stories as alumni of Washington University, what will they say about you, the class of 2020? Right now, you are working to write your story, 
And someday, I hope the headlines read something like these. Washington University alumnus discovers breakthrough treatment for cancer. Washington University alumna leads nonprofit to address racial disparities in St. Louis. Washington University alumnus overturns historic case of injustice in their own community. Sacrifice, global citizenship, leadership, service, dignity, and resilience. These are some of the qualities and values we hold dearly at Washington University. The values we have been working to cultivate in you since you stepped foot on our campus, and the values we hope you carry with you as you work to make yourself and the world a better place for years and decades to come. While I am deeply saddened that this is the way this phase of your time on this campus had to end, I am comforted to know that your time with us at Washington University is just beginning. That's why we call it commencement. Your Wash U journey doesn't end here, it starts here, and what you do moving forward will be the story we write. Thank you once again for your flexibility, your determination, your passion, and your convictions, and congratulations on this significant milestone. Once the time is right, I look forward to seeing you back on this campus to celebrate in person, and I look forward to many more moments with you as you engage in your lifelong Washington University journey. Until that time comes, stay safe and well, and know that we are thinking of you. Congratulations. Will all the candidates who have completed the requirements for the master's degree please rise? By virtue of the authority delegated to me on behalf of Washington University, I hereby confer upon each of you your master's degree with all its attendant rights, privileges, and obligations. The graduates will please be seated. Will all the candidates who have completed the requirements for the doctoral degree please rise? By virtue of the authority delegated to me on behalf of Washington University, I hereby confer upon each of you your doctoral degree with all its attendant rights, privileges, and obligations. The doctors will please be seated. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate Douglas and I am class marshal and a member of the graduating class of 2020. In 1966, the graduating seniors inaugurated the Teacher of the Year Award to be presented to a member of the full-time faculty who in the graduate's opinion was the outstanding teacher whom they'd encountered during their medical school years. Since 1970, each graduating class has selected two individuals one from the preclinical faculty and one from the full-time clinical faculty to receive the Teacher of the Year Award. Dr. Stephen Chang has worked extensively with medical students, both preclinically and clinically, and has received numerous awards for his role as an educator. As renal course master, he created a course that was organized, engaging, extremely well taught, and remains one of the most beloved preclinical courses here at WashU. He has been appointed to the team to develop the new curriculum, and I have no doubt that he will create an even stronger program going forward. Dr. Chang's ex talents extend beyond medicine, however, and I would be remiss if I did not recall Dr. Chang and colleagues' musical parody, Genius, which is so fondly remembered by my class. It is my honor to introduce Dr. Stephen Chang as the 2020 Preclinical Teacher of the Year. To the class of 2020 and to your friends and family who have stood by you over these last several years, congratulations on making it to graduation. My name is Stephen Chang. I'm a nephrologist and I teach the uh, nephrology pathophysiology course, in case you don't know me, or in case you only know me from the 2x speed feed on Canvas. Um, I know it's kind of weird, not that you're graduating, but that we're doing this remotely. Um, and I really wish I could be there to personally tell you face to face how honored I am to be recognized as a preclinical teacher of the year. Um, this is a huge and distinguished honor for me. Um, and to have any role in your development as physicians, to have any little um, 
stone in the foundation of your identity as physicians is a real privilege for me and I think for all of us. It's funny to think about how far you've already come from being novices in nephrology to building on that and becoming clinicians and researchers. And right now, equal partners and collaborators in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are exceptionally proud of you and we are honored to work with you. And now I end with a quote from Yoda. Always pass on what you have learned. Not his greatest quote, but it serves the purpose. Um, take what we have given you that's good, learn from where we've maybe had room to grow, and be even better than us when you teach your students. We are so proud of what you've already done and we look forward to what you'll do in the future. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Hickman, medical education representative and proud member of the class of 2020. In 1979, Dr. Sidney S. Pearl, an alumnus of the class of 1932, established an award for inspirational teaching. Dr. Pearl stipulated the awardee was to be chosen by the graduating class from among the clinical faculty. I am excited to introduce Dr. Jerome Escoda as the winner of the Clinical Teacher of the Year Award. Dr. Escoda has helped guide us to become more independent and prepare us for the responsibilities of being physicians. As director of the Internal Medicine Clerkship, he has positively impacted the education of all WashU medical students. Dr. Escoda has always kept an open door policy, making sure to reach out to every student on the medicine clerkship and ensure that we are all feeling well supported. He enthusiastically celebrates our successes and all of his teaching is done with the signature warmth and kindness. Considering that he also won the 2019 Teaching Faculty of the Year Award in both infectious diseases and in general internal medicine, it seems that we have all come to a consensus on Dr. Escoda. Dr. Escoda specializes in infectious diseases and as such has been an important part in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic here in St. Louis. While our class chose Dr. Escoda for this award before the pandemic had spread across the United States, his perspective on responding to this crisis helps to demonstrate why he is such an effective educator. He says that our years of training are designed so we can adapt to any situation and serve our patients in their time of need. It's like you're riding a different bike now. While it feels new and difficult, it's important to remember that it's still a bike, he says. Even if the bike feels foreign, our training gives us the skills to respond to the situation. Dr. Escoda, thank you for your constant support and all that you do to prepare us for times like these. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Jerome Escoda as the winner of the Sydney S. Pearl Clinical Teacher of the Year Award. First of all, I would like to thank you for honoring me with this award. Your class holds a special place in my heart because you are my first cohort of students as a clerkship director, my first children, so to speak. And because of this, I will always have a special connection with your class that neither time nor distance can sever. Truthfully, I stand here a better teacher because I learned a great deal from each one of you. In July, you shall approach another milestone in your career. But because of the challenges of the current situation, you may find yourself in a uniquely unfamiliar clinical environment, and the future now may seem more uncertain than ever. Let me share you something. When I graduated in college, uh, well, that's several years ago, the uncertainty that loomed large then was best depicted by a hypothetical commencement speech published in the Chicago Tribune. It began with, I quote, ladies and gentlemen of class 99, wear sunscreen. If I could only offer you one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it, end of quote. Fast forward 20 years later, this message still rings true but certainly the author would not have imagined that wearing a face mask would also be part of that future. You see, 
we deal with uncertainty all the time in many forms, but yet we always manage to thrive. I want to read you a quote that I think best sums up my message and something I want you to remember as well as you move through with your career. It says, I quote, the opposite of certainty is not uncertainty, but it's openness, curiosity, and a willingness to embrace paradox, end of quote. So be brave, class of 2020. Know that the important lessons that you have learned in the last four years have prepared you well to face any challenge that you may encounter. Embrace the uncertainty and be open to the vast possibilities and opportunities that await you in your future. So I send you off with the warmest hug and the biggest smile. Wherever you go, I will remember you always, even with your mask on, and I will keep cheering for you even from a distance. Congratulations and soar high. Good afternoon, everyone. For those watching who don't know me, my name is Dr. Avery Strong, and I'm the current class president for and a member of the graduating class of 2020. I want to start off by saying congratulations to my colleagues. Because you're watching from home, I suspect many of you have something in your hand, be it champagne, wine, beer, soda, or any number of other beverages. To all of you, I cheers. Secondly, I'd like to say thank you to all the people that have helped us on our way. Without you, none of this would have been possible. This is an amazing accomplishment. That feels a bit surreal. Surreal for the fact that many of us can still remember back years or decades ago, dreaming of becoming a doctor. Now we stand together with that goal fully realized. But it's also surreal for the fact that we're entering this profession under unusual circumstances. And while today we celebrate philosophically together, we're physically apart. Nonetheless, as I look back at our time here, I think of all the amazing moments we've had, memories we've made, and laughs we've shared. I'm even taken back all the way to the time when I was elected to this position. I remember running on the premise of some of my values. The first, to be challenged. The second, wanting to challenge others. And the third, and most important, wanting to make meaningful relationships. These are values I continue to hold high today. I have to say, however, at the time I was elected, I honestly didn't know I would have to write this commencement speech. Since learning that a few years ago, I have thought deeply and often about what I want to say and have been sometimes needlessly anxious for this moment. It's been difficult to decide on a topic to talk about. I'm not an expert in any field, and I can't grant you some magical message that will change your life in five to 10 minutes. But over the past few months, I realized I am an expert in myself. So when reflecting back to the moment when I was elected to this position, I think again about the third value, making meaningful relationships. To me, this also means needing to be vulnerable. So today, I've decided to be vulnerable to you and share with you my experience and reflection over the past few months. I must admit that this time has been a struggle for me. I find energy in socializing, so social distancing does not come easy. I, like many of you, have felt sad, disappointed, and even angry at times, both for the state of our world and for the time we've lost during the final months of medical school. As I reflected, the most difficult part for me was trying to find closure. The speed with which changes occurred starting just a week before match day left me feeling bewildered and lost. To give a metaphor, I view our time during medical school like a big book in a series of books that make up our lives. An excellently authored book has been written for each of us here describing our accomplishments, our memories, our friends, our lives, and all that we've learned about medicine and ourselves. And yet, it felt to me like we never got to read the final part. In a way, it feels like I made it all the way to the final chapter only to find that the last few pages have been ripped out. I struggled with this lack of closure for a while. I even grieved. Grieved for the loss of time with friends, the inability to hug them, the inability to travel, the inability to celebrate the way I had envisioned. Slowly, however, I realized that the end of this book was not ripped out. The last few pages were actually written, and we are currently living through them. So it's not an issue of being unable to read the few final pages. In reality, I just quite frankly didn't like how it ended. 
To give an example, for all the people that used to watch the show Lost, you know what I mean when I say the authors took a great story and turned it into an unenjoyable and confusing ending. That's how I feel. Or at least, that's how I felt until a few weeks ago. While out on a morning run, socially distanced of course, I began to realize that what I was doing was blaming the world around me for writing me an ending that I didn't like. I was spending so much time passively angry at the uncontrollable influences currently affecting the world that I was blinded to one fact. The author of my book is not some third-party television writer shifting the ending in a nonsensical and disappointing direction. The author is me. I am the author of my own book, and if I don't like the ending, I have no one to blame but myself. I wanted to blame the world. I wanted to blame society. I wanted to blame the pandemic, but truly, I could only blame myself for not making the most of my time, even during a horrible situation. And I'm not saying that this isn't hard. I'm not saying that I can no longer be disappointed. I'm not saying I can no longer be sad. I am simply saying that even though these feelings are true, I still have to ask myself, how can I write an ending to this book that I'm not only proud of, but will enjoy reading for years to come? So I've been reformatting my outlook over the past few weeks. I'm trying more to focus on myself, connecting, albeit virtually, with friends and family, and building healthy habits that I can hopefully maintain through residency. I know the time I'm taking now to build myself up, to be kind to myself and to love myself, will only ensure much better care for my future patients. Lastly, I've made a promise to myself that each night when I stand in front of the mirror, I'll be able to look myself in the eyes and answer two very important questions. What have I written in my book today? And is it worth reading? Thank you to all for making these past years absolutely amazing. I'll end by saying remember to take time for yourself, be kind to yourself, and above all, just as we have done during our time here, make meaningful relationships that last a lifetime. I'm Dr. Eva Agard, Senior Associate Dean for Education at Washington University School of Medicine. Graduating class, please stand for recitation of the oath. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will, I will not, not permit, permit considerations, considerations of, of age, age disease, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will, I will practice, practice my, my profession with, with conscience and, and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health well-being and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make, I make these, these promises, promises solemnly, freely, freely and, and upon my honor. honor. Hello, I'm Lisa Moscoso, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Each year, it is my privilege to introduce new doctors and watch them as they walk across the stage. Even though you can't be here in person to make that walk, it should not diminish the importance of this moment for you, your families, and all of us here at the medical school. It certainly doesn't for me. I speak for all of the medical school faculty and staff when I say that it has been a privilege to walk across these years with you. It is with a profound sense of gratitude. And I'm just going to say it, love, that I give you the class of 2020. As we present the doctors, each name will be announced and we will share a slide about each graduate. Graduates, you'll be receiving your diplomas in the mail 
And in addition, there's an online program with a listing of awards and prizes, recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of our graduates. So traditionally, the first Doctor of Medicine degree to be awarded each year goes to the president of the graduating class. So today, we will begin by congratulating Dr. Avery Strong. Hey everyone, again, my name is Dr. Avery Strong, and I'd like to take this time to say thank you to my family, my friends, and my mentors. None of this would have been possible without you. The first group of graduates completed six years or more of medical and research education and are receiving both a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Doctor of Philosophy degree. Dr. Ehi Ahirome. Dr. Britt Anderson. Dr. Michael Byrne. Dr. Gregory Bligard. Dr. Andrew Chang. Dr. Vivek Durai. Hello, I'm Dr. Isuman. I'd like to thank my family and every single person that helped to make this day a success. Midasi. Dr. Sharice Garber. Dr. Lemoyne Abimana Griffin. This is Dr. Putzer Hong. Man, that sounds kind of weird. Um, thank you to my family, friends, mentors, the MSDP, and whoever was crazy enough to meet me here nine years ago. It's been fun. Hi, I'm Dr. Huynh, and I would like to thank my family and my friends for believing in me and supporting me um, all these years. Um, thank you. You guys are really the best. Dr. Linda Johnson. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Callis. I matched into internal medicine at Northwestern University. And I just wanted to thank all the outstanding clinicians, educators, scientists who inspired me and mentored me along the way at WashU. And a special thanks to my family and friends for their support, especially my wife, Georgia, who's been with me in this journey every step of the way. I'm Dr. Roger Klein, and I match into urology at UPMC. I'd like to thank my wife, my sister, and my parents for their love and support, as well as my teachers, mentors, and advisors for all their guidance along the way. Thank you. Dr. Dove Lerman Sinkoff. Hi, I'm Dr. Sophia Lewis. I'm going into internal medicine here at Barnes Jewish Hospital. I want to say thank you to my parents, uh, my husband, Eric, my brother and his family, the entire Jones Lab at UCLA, all my friends, and all the baking recipes that got me through medical school and graduate school. Hello, I'm Dr. Yetta Lee. Thank you to mom and to all my mentors and friends for supporting me on this extraordinary journey. Dr. Jonathan Lin. Hi, I'm Dr. Mossum, and I'll be at Brigham doing a combined IM genetics residency. A huge thank you to my family, husband, classmates, and lab mates for your support over the last eight years. Dr. Kelly Hill Mark Walter. Hello, I'm Dr. Landon Hetchin. I want to say thank you to all my friends and family for all your support. I could not have gotten to where I am today without your help. Thank you. Dr. Eugene Park. Hi, my name is Dr. Kabul Patel, and I'd like to thank my family, my partner Pooja, and my mentors who helped me reach this moment. Dr. Terth Patel. Dr. Saravanan Raju. Hi, my name is Dr. Wilbur Song. Thanks to my partner, Melissa, my family, friends, thesis mentor, lab coworkers, fellow students, and medical school faculty and staff for a great seven years. Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Barbaro. I'd like to thank my parents, brothers, wife, 
daughter, dogs, in-laws, mentors for their support during my MD PhD training. Dr. Colleen Walsh Lang. Dr. Georgia Wilkie. Dr. Lu Yang. The next group of graduates has completed a full year of research training in addition to the medical program and is receiving both a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Master of Arts degree. Hi, I'm Dr. Marjorie Gang, and I just want to thank my parents, my boyfriend Robert Chen, my friends, and my mentors who have loved and supported me on this journey. Thank you. Dr. Brooke Lang. Dr. Nakul Shah. The next group of graduates has completed a full year of advanced study in addition to the medical program and is receiving both a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Master of Population Health Sciences degree. Hi, my name is Dr. Howe. I'd really like to thank my husband and our families and all of my peers and my mentors here at WashU for all of your help and support in the past few years. Thanks and congratulations, everybody. Dr. William Padovano. Dr. Patrick Phelan. Dr. Maria Schwabi. Dr. Ian Wood. The next group of graduates has completed a full year of clinical research training in addition to the medical program and are receiving both a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Master of Public Health degree. Thank you to the most wonderful friends and family anyone could ask for. I hope you know that it's your support over the last six years that has finally gotten me here. Hi, my name is Caroline and I matched into OBGYN at Barnes. Big thanks to my family, friends, and mentors for your endless love and support. The next group of graduates has completed a full year of clinical research training in addition to the medical program and is receiving both a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Master of Science in Clinical Investigation degree. Dr. Bronwyn Bedrick. Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Hickman. I'd like to thank Drs. Ben Polonka, Michael Avedon, Ed Hogan, Allison Zazulia, Robert Naismith, Clay Semenkovich, Patricia Cow, and Jay Piccarillo. I'd also like to thank Dr. Catherine Deemer and Angie McBride for all their support in the match process. And thanks to my parents, Drs. Wendy Settle and Len Hickman, as well as my fiance, Dr. Helena Hong. Dr. Jawad Khalifa. Dr. Daniel Lander. The following graduate is receiving a Doctor of Medicine degree and a Master of Business Administration degree. Hi everyone, my name is Rena. I matched into pediatrics at St. Louis Children's Hospital and I just wanted to say thank you to my husband, to my family, and to everyone who's taught me at WashU. I couldn't have done this without you and I really appreciate it, so thank you. The following graduates are receiving a Doctor of Medicine degree. Dr. Fatima Alvi. Dr. Eva Archer. Hi, I'm Dr. Curtis Austin. I'm so excited to be graduating today. I want to thank my parents for their support every step of the way. And for my friends, I'll always cherish and remember the adventures we had. Hi, I'm Dr. Louisa Vai. Thank you to my parents, my family, my wonderful partner, David, my dearest classmates and friends for all of your support and encouragement over the last four years. I really couldn't have done it without you all. 
My name is Dr. Lauren Belke. I'd like to thank my family and my friends, both in med school and back home, for supporting me through this journey. Dr. Baja Blahut. Y'all, I'm Dr. Bowman. Thank you to my parents, my friends, everyone here at WashU who's helped me on my medical school journey, and last but not least, Leslie Nope. Hello, I'm Dr. Emma Braun. I would like to thank my family, and especially my parents, for their eternal love and wisdom, and my wonderful friends. Dr. Elizabeth Buckley. Dr. Bradley Busby. Dr. Michelle Chung. Dr. Kevin Clark. Dr. McLean Davies. Hey, this is Taylor. I'd like to thank my mom, Sandra, my dad, Tim, my partner, Alex, as well as all of my family and friends here at WashU and back home for all your support throughout medical school. Love you guys. Hi, I'm Dr. Douglas. I would like to thank my family and my friends for being my source of support and inspiration throughout these last four years. Couldn't have done it without you, and I love you all. Hello, I'm Dr. Casey Drubin. I'll be doing anesthesiology at Columbia University. All that I am and all that I ever will be, I attribute to you guys. Thank you to my friends, family, and mentors. Dr. Noah Eby. Dr. Ryan Furdock. Hello, I'm Dr. Kate Jarrell, and I'm matched here at Washington University for orthopedic surgery. Thank you to my parents, my family, my husband, Will, and all of my mentors for your support in helping me get to this point. I'm incredibly grateful for all of you. Hello, I'm Dr. Will Jarrell, and I'm matched at Washington University for general surgery. I'm incredibly grateful for the support of my wife, Kate, my mom, my extended family, and all of my mentors throughout medical school. Thank you. Dr. Samantha Graney. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jimmy He, and I'm matched into psychiatry at Kaiser in Oakland, California. I would like to thank God and everybody who was supportive along the way. Hi, I'm Dr. Helena Hong, and I wanted to say thank you to my medical school mentors, Drs. Jay Picarillo, Darina Caligiri, Diane Merritt, Tammy Sohn, David Much, Christopher D., and Dean Catherine Deemer and Angie McBride. I also wanted to thank my parents, Dr. Julie Yang and Dr. Jason Hong, and my fiance, the new Dr. Brian Hickman. Hello, I'm Dr. Jensen. Thank you, mom and dad, Kyle and Emma, Tony, and all my friends who have supported me along the way. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jang. I'm matching to internal medicine at UPMC. I'm so very happy and grateful to my mom, dad, Henry, as well as my friends and mentors for all of their love and support. Thank you. Dr. Jacqueline Kading. Dr. Gregory Kazarian. Dr. Elizabeth Kim. Dr. Spencer Kitchen. Dr. Jessica Kuo. Dr. Edward Lee. Dr. Zoe Liu. Hi, I'm Dr. Liu. I'd like to thank my family, my friends, and my mentors. Dr. Hera Merriam. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Mayer. Thank you to my parents, Kent and Becky, my mentor, Anna Maria Arbelias, my sister, Allison, all my friends from med school, and of course, Smeetly and Ruthie. Dr. Joshua Mendoza. Dr. Tyler Moon. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Divya Natarajan. Thank you to Appa, Amma, Pati, Kamlu Venkat, and all my amazing classmates and friends at WashU. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Yanni Nikitas, and I matched into radiation oncology at UCLA. I would like to give a special thank you to my family and friends for all their love and support these last four years. Thank you. Dr. Daniel Nulty. Dr. Unhe Oak. Dr. Augustin Asula. Dr. Aaron Peterson. Hi, my name is Dr. Griffin. Catherine and I are sitting here in Boston where we match for internal medicine. I wanted to thank everybody uh, who trusted me enough to let me into Washington University. I've really loved being a part of this community and thank you to all the faculty, my friends, my family that helped me get the most out of my time here and make it to this graduation day. Dr. Alexa Pohl. Dr. Erica Danielle Poivre. Hi, I'm Allie Rubin. Thank you to my family, my friends, the WashU Department of OBGYN, faculty and residents, and to my boyfriend, Zach Beller. Hi, I'm Dr. Scannell. Uh, thank you to my parents and my sister, all my family and friends back home, and all my friends and mentors here that have helped me through these last four years. Dr. Charles Schlepfer. Dr. Richard Silverman. Dr. Andrew Simmerman. Dr. Carl Stokes. Hi, I'm Dr. Julia Suggs, and I'd like to thank my friends, my family, most importantly, my mom, my dad, the Dr. Suggs that came before me and the entire vascular surgery department. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Thornton. Thank you so much to my parents, Trevor and Jenna, the rest of my family, my friends, and my amazing classmates and mentors at WashU. I'm Dr. Tin. I'd like to say thanks to my family, my friends, Luke especially, and I'd like to say goodbye to my classmates. You all meant so much to me. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Tompkins. I'll be doing residency in internal medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. I just want to thank my mom, dad, significant other Betsy, and the rest of my friends and family for being so supportive along the way. Hey, I'm Dr. Zhang. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, and all my friends for helping me get to where I am today. Thank you. Dr. Anand Upadhyay. Dr. Bianca Venucci. Hi, my name is Dr. Vishkini. I match into internal medicine at Barnes Jewish Hospital, and I'd like to thank my friends and family for supporting me along the way, including my mom, dad, brother, two aunts, niece, and my grandparents. Dr. Danny Wang. Dr. Jane Wong. Dr. Daniel Ward. Hi, I'm Dr. Noah Wasserman, and I just wanted to thank my parents, Penny and Richard, my brother, Joseph, my in-laws, Shannon and Charlie, and of course, my beautiful wife, Tian, for being on this journey the whole way. Thank you. Dr. Ashley Whitson. Hello, I'm Dr. Connor Williams, and I would like to thank my parents, my brother, my girlfriend, and my dog for all helping me through med school. Hey everyone, I'm Greg. I match into neurology at Stanford, and I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to my friends and family who helped get me through med school. Hi, uh, this is Dr. Wong. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to my parents uh, for all your support, uh, to my sister. Uh, thank you to Kathy for your help, uh, and the rest of my med school classmates. I wish you all luck. Hi, my name is Dr. Catherine Chu. I would like to thank all my mentors at WashU for believing in me and for supporting mm -hmm. me to get to where I am today. I would also like to thank all the great friends that I made at WashU, as well as my family, including Griffin, 
for always being there for me. Dr. Zhu Chen Zhu. Hello, this is Dr. Elena Yu. I would like to thank my family, everybody at the med school, and all the friends that I've met at med school as well. Thank you, everybody. Hi, I'm Dr. Felicia Zhang, and I'd like to thank my friends, my mom, dad, and sister, and especially all the wonderful general surgery faculty that have brought me to this point. Dr. Chow Nan Zong. Dr. Minerva Zhou. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2020. We will conclude the 2020 recognition ceremony for the Washington University School of Medicine with a sweet video of the class of 2020. Stay safe and be well. Welcome. Welcome to Washington University School of Medicine's white coat ceremony for the entering class of 2016. You are. <laughs> This is a very special day for you as you take your oath, your professional oath, and a very special day for us as we officially accept you into our family, the family of our profession, the family of Washington University School of Medicine. You belong at Washington University School of Medicine. You've worked so hard to get here, and you have the talent and brilliance to be here. It is a long journey in which you are incrementally building your collection of experiences. You cannot learn it all at once. It will take years, and it will take discipline, and it will take focus. There will be disappointments and setbacks and so many moments when you will feel that you could have done better. Just keep embracing the journey. You will succeed and we'll be cheering so loudly for you. This is a time of transition and it may bring sadness and joy, anticipation and gratitude. And the temptation may be to think about how things were or to worry about what will be. But I challenge you to be in this moment, to have all of those feelings without leaving this moment. <laughs>